Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to our live stream. If you're able to hear me okay, please let me know in the chat window so that we can begin today's session. Uh, we do have quite a bit of content to cover today. So I'd like to see if we can maximize our time. And I would love to just be able to dive right into it and begin developing this application. So if you are able to hear me, please let me know. Hey, King Capo, welcome back. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good Monday. I hope everyone's having a good Monday. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and begin. Um, today we're going to be building a custom real estate application from start to finish. So as I promised you guys last time, um, this feedback came in from one of the attendees. They wanted to see how to develop a real estate application so that we can list properties, our agents can get messages, we can um, retrieve those messages and be able to help out a potential buyer for the property. So I do want to set the right expectation for today's live stream because we only get one hour. We're not going to be able to build a sophisticated, robust application. It's going to have all of the functionality, but it might lack some aesthetics and the look and feel again, because we just don't have enough time to polish up the application to make it look uh, really clean and presentable on the web. But if we had a couple of more hours, we can fine tune the aesthetics to make it look uh, visually appealing to the end users. So that's something that it would take a little bit more time, but at the very least, we're going to have all the functionality. Hey, Katie, good to see you. I hope you're making good progress with your application. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm just going to move this to the side on my end. Just bear with me for a moment. All right. So the entire application is going to have seven data pages or interfaces. We're going to have three tables and then we're going to have five web pages where we plan on deploying our application. So here's a live example. Again, we're going to focus on functionality first and foremost. And then if we have a little bit more time, we can work on the design and the layout of all of our fields and all of our data. So the idea here is for anybody to be able to find a property uh, using different search fields. We have an advanced search, which we can also search based on agent name. You can also concatenate these three fields together to make it a single field and use autocomplete. So when you are um, entering some value inside the search field, we can search based on city address and zip all at the same time. However, that would have taken a little bit more time on my end today. So I decided to make it simple. Just have three search fields with the advanced search, hit search, and then you're able to see the list of properties. You can also organize the way the data is presented here. Um, on the results page, if you see some of our previous live streams on modifying HTML and CSS, you're going to be able to see me use an HTML block and organize the layout of the data. Okay, so we're not going to focus on that today. And then in the details, not only can we see the property details where you can have additional images, you're also able to send a message to the agent that's listing that property. And then we can log in as the agent. And once logged in, we're able to see all the property properties that we manage as the actual agent. And from here, we can publish properties to the directory. We can do an inline edit where we unpublish that property if we no longer want it to be listed. And then in the property details, we can edit and modify the details of the property. And then we can also see the messages that we're getting for that specific property. And last but not least, we have the ability to add a new property. So if we get a new listing from our broker, we can submit that using the form and that property will now be listed here in a public directory. Can you expand upon this application? Absolutely. So if you have a brokerage and you have your agents, uh, you could have an admin level user logging as the broker to be able to see all of the real estate properties in aggregate across all the agents. Uh, we can see all the messages and we can also manage the communication between the agent and also the end user. So you can definitely expand upon this to make it much more um, bigger, uh, scale this application to make it bigger if needed, uh, depending on the requirements. So that's the live example. Let's go into Caspio and let's see how we can go about developing that. So we create a new app uh, from a blank app. If you have some properties in Excel or Access database that you plan on importing, you can begin that way. We're going to start with a blank template and then let's call this RE for real estate live build and hit finish. 
Okay, so here is my application container. We're going to open it. And in Caspio, you always begin on the table level. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream, we need to create three different tables. We need to have one table for inquiries. We need to have one table for properties. And we need to have one table for agents. Why? Because one agent can be linked to many properties and also many inquiries. So that's why we need to have uh, three different tables here. So we create a table and let's begin with the agents. So we will say agent ID. And for my data type, that's going to be a random ID. Let's go with the first name of the agent, last name, email, password, and date added or date created. Okay, so these are the important fields that we will need in our agents table. The email is going to be a unique field because you're never going to have two different agents with the same email. Emails are always unique. And then your password field is going to have a password data type and date created can be a timestamp. Okay, so there's my first table. We're going to save it. And let's call this RE Live TBL Agents. I'm just going to list one agent inside my table so that later on when we build a login screen and try to log in, we have some demo information that we can use or demo data. So we're going to have maybe uh, Karen Lee, Karen Lee at agent.com, just an arbitrary email here. And then for password, we can say test123 and test123. And for now, we really just need one agent in the table. But you can add additional agents if your brokerage has multiple agents and they all need to log in and manage their own properties. The next thing we're going to set up is our main table, which is going to contain all the property information. So you're going to have property ID. And again, I'll use a random ID for that. Let's add maybe some kind of a title for this property. Let's have, uh, we also need to have agent ID. So I almost forgot agent ID. Let's move that up. That's going to be our foreign key. We need to have agent ID in this table so that we can associate our properties back to our agents, right? So if I list a property as an agent using this submission form here, there's a hidden field here that's automatically stamping the agent's ID into our properties table. That's how we're able to link all of our agents back to our properties. So after property title, perhaps we can have um, all of the other typical fields that you might have, maybe address, let's have city, let's have state, let's have zip, uh, I'm trying to think what a price, you obviously want to track bedrooms, uh, probably bathrooms. Uh, let's see, what else do we see in a typical listing for properties, maybe square feet of the property, maybe lot size, so that's another one that you typically see. And we won't list too many more. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Maybe description, you're built. So for description, I'm just gonna quickly change that to text 64,000, you're built. And if you know of any other ones, just go ahead and list them out in the chat. Um, let's do image. So we need to have image one, image two, image three. Hey Tracy, good to see you. These are all gonna be file data types so that we can attach images. Uh, we definitely need to have listing status, listing status. So that's going to be a checkbox and maybe one more we're going to have for date created or date listed. And for that, we're going to use date and time. So listing status, I turned that into a checkbox because the agent should have the ability to make a listing to publish that or unpublish, right? So if I'm just adding some basic information, it's not ready to be published yet. I still want to be able to submit my form without actually choosing to publish this listing to the directory. So I'm adding this information. I can hit submit before I check this. I'll still be able to see that property in my report. And then later on, I can come back here. I can hit edit and I can make that listing public inside the directory here. Okay, very simple functionality and workflow. Let's come back to my table. Let's save it and let's give it a name RE Live TBL Properties. Okay, and then one last table for inquiries or messages. Last but not least, let's have inquiry ID. Okay, 
that's going to be random ID. Uh, let's also have, what else do we need? We need, um, we're going to need property ID so that we can associate our inquiries back to our properties. We also want agent ID so that we know which agent is receiving that inquiry. That's going to be text 255. So these are going to be our two foreign keys. Let's have the name of the person submitting the message, their email, their phone number, the message sent, and date sent. So these are all of your fields that you would normally see. So this can be a timestamp. Message will be text 64,000. And the rest of the fields can remain the same. Let's save it. Let's give it a name. RE Live TBL Messages or Inquiries. So three tables. Okay, very simple workflow. If you have a need for additional tables, you can always list them here. And then later on, you can build your interfaces on top of those tables. Now, the next step is when you, when you create your tables, you want to be able to create your relationships. So we go to this button up here. Okay, so we want the relationship for this app. We're going to include our tables. Okay, so if you have a database background, if you use Axis in the past or understand data, uh, database relationships, you're going to feel right at home using Caspio because you can expand and collapse your tables. You can move them around however you want. And then you can connect your tables using primary keys and foreign keys. So we know that one agent can be linked to many messages. So we just click and drag this line over the agent ID field. You let go. That's going to be a one to many because one agent can receive many messages. Okay, so in this table of properties, we know that one agent can be linked to many properties, right? Because I can submit this form multiple times if I am listing many properties. So we link the property ID to the agent ID. You let go. Once again, it's going to be a one to many. Okay, and then you can just reposition that table down if you'd like. And there is one more connection that we can make here. One property can have many messages, so you link this pr uh, primary ID to the foreign key, and that's also a one-to-many. So very simple schema, very simple database design. Again, if you have a database background, in Caspia you can do one-to-one -one relationships, you can do one-to-many, and you can do many-to-many -many via third table. And as I always mention, if you have many tables, let's say 15, 20, 25 tables, uh, you're going to see these lines crisscrossing, and it's going to look like a, sp a giant spider web. Okay, it's inevitable. It's just going to happen. Okay, so let's save the layout. The next step is to go down to the authentications object. And now we need to create that login interface. Okay, so that we allow our agents to log into the application. So we're going to create the authentication. Okay, so we're going to use the agents table. Let's use custom for setup. And then let's use the recommended. How do we validate the agent that's logging into the application? So we want to use the information from within the view. We know that we only have one agent inside this table. We have Karen Lee. So she's the only one who's going to be able to log in as the agent, unless you list more agents inside that table. So we have email and password. I'm just going to rename my label to say email. It's a little bit more clear. And then my password field is going to be label password. Now I could also add additional elements here. Let's say we add an HTML block at the very top. And then for here in the standard tab, I can just say agent login. You can highlight it, make it a little bit bigger, maybe heading one so it stands out. So that's going to be the heading that's going to appear above my login screen. So let's click on create. And let's give this a name. Let's call this again RE Live. I'm going to use that as my prefix, agent login, and hit finish. So now that we have the foundation created, we can move on to building all of the web interfaces. Okay, and all the web interfaces you will create using the data pages object. So let's start, let's start with a simple one. When the agents log in, we want them to be able to create a listing or add a property. So let's build that form first. Create a data page. Okay, so we need to build a submission form. We select that option, we hit next. And we want the table for properties because when I submit that form on the front end, right, we want this information to go directly into our properties table. Let's give it a name, add property. 
For my style, I'm going to use gray. And for my localization, I'm going to use English. And I need to restrict access to my agents. That's my authentication that we created inside this object because we need to enforce the login first before they can submit that property. So they need to log in. Okay, so I need all of my fields in the form, so let's move them all to the right. Okay, using the double arrow, we hit next. And now we just need to modify each one of our fields on how we want that to look on the front end. So for, uh, for agent ID, okay, what we need to do for the form element here is we want to hide that field. That doesn't need to appear on my form, but what we need to do inside on load, we need to select authentication fields and we can now grab the ID of the agent that's logged into the application to automatically stamp the agent's ID into the properties table. Okay, so this agent ID field is actually on the form here as well. It's just a hidden field. You don't see it. But depending on who logs in, if it's Karen, if it's John, if it's Raj, and they have their own unique agent ID, it's going to populate inside that field. You just don't see it. Okay? You don't want the end user to tamper with that information. And then you can modify each one of your other fields the way you want. It's completely up to you, whatever preference you have. For So for example, title, address, city, state, zip, price, bedroom. Description can be a text area. Okay, so the user can see a bigger box of what they're typing. And for listing status, you can actually put some display text after the checkbox to say check to publish, if you'd like. And date listed. You can also make that field required. You can make all of the fields required. It's completely up to you. I'm not going to make any more additional changes here. I'm just going to hit finish to save. So there's my very first form. I'm going to deploy the form now. Enable deployment status and grab my embed code. So I'm just going to copy the snippet of code from Caspio, go back to Weebly. And I'm going to go to this page, add property. We're going to go to build. I've already included my... Um, embed code widget inside Weebly. It's right over here in the middle. I'm just going to click inside it, edit my custom HTML, and paste my Caspio code that I just copied on the page called Add Property. I'm going to publish. And let's take a look. So now here's my live example of my website. If I go to Add Property, you're going to see a login screen. There's my heading. And all I need to do now is just log in as Karen. So Karen Lee at agent.com, password test123. And as soon as I log in, I should be able to see that form that we just created. Okay, so hopefully you can see how easy that was. The agent ID field is hidden, but it's automatically stamping Karen's ID inside that field. It's populating it. So let's make one quick submission via this form. Okay, so we're going to say uh, beautiful new home. Address can be 123 Sample Street. City can be Sample City. Uh, California, zip code, something random. Price can be, uh, well, right now with the prices that they are, it's uh, pretty wild here in California. Uh, bedrooms, let's just say for a three bedroom, three bath, especially if you live in the Bay Area, that's the price that you can expect to pay. Astronomical, in my opinion, for square feet, you're probably getting about 2,100 square feet for the house and lot size, I don't know, maybe 4,000. And description, um, the seller is saying, if you want this house, you want this house, you'll have to <laughs> have to remove all contingencies and pay with cash. No exceptions, right? You might as well put that in the description because most people today are paying all cash, right? <laughs> Year built, uh, I don't know, let's say 1990. And then you can include some images. Let's just include one image that I used before in the past. I have a image here for this sale and listing status. Yeah, let's publish it. Why not? We're going to publish that listing and date listed. Let's just say it's today. We're going to hit submit. Okay, so your submission was successful. Now, before I can manage that property, I need to create that report. Okay, so let's go back to Caspio and build that data page. Okay, we're going to use reports. Let's go with the tabular format. We're going to hit next, and let's go with the properties table. Now that I submitted that property to the properties table, I need to build a report that's going to pull the information from that table. 
that's where my property resides okay let's call this manage my properties i'm going to use the gray style once again and localization once again is going to be english restrict access to your agent login hit next do I want the ability to search? You could create a search form, but I imagine if you're an agent, I don't know how many listings agents have. You might have five or 10 or 15 at the time, but if it's not more than that, you really don't need a search interface because you can just see them all in one list very quickly. No need to search through 10 listings if you're ever going to be selling 10 listings at most at a time. So we are going to filter based on predefined. We need to enable record level security because each agent, when they log in, need to be able to see properties linked to their agent ID. Okay, very important. As Karen, I don't want to see John's listings or Susan's listings. I just need to be able to see my own listings. We're going to hit next. No need to filter based on any one of our fields. I just want to be able to see the listings. So we're going to hit next. And now what information do we want to display on the results page. So let's have the property title. Let's have maybe city, state, and zip. So really this is supposed to be the summary of your listings and in the details page you can include uh, additional info regarding each property. Let's see what else. Price. Uh, this can be saved for the details page, details page, year built. Let's include one image, listing status, and date listed. As I said the rest of the fields you can include in the details view. You don't need to include that in the results page because it's going to be, I'm building a tabular report and if you have too many columns, it's going to stretch out that report and you have to scroll left and right in order to see all of your columns. Let's hit next. Let's do an inline edit. With inline edit, remember on the live example here, when you manage properties, I'd like to be able to do an inline edit. So when you click on that link, you have the ability to make listings published or unpublished. So back over here, hit next. So under property title with editing, notice that here when I clicked on inline edit, all of my fields are read only except for this one here with the checkbox. So I'm gonna do the same thing just to show you how you can manipulate each field one at a time. So if you don't want the end user to edit something here in inline edit, you can go to editing and you can just say allow field to be editable and uncheck the box. Same thing for city. Same thing for state, zip, price, image. Now the listing status, I want the end user or the agent to be able to make listings published or unpublished. And for date listed, once again, we're gonna do that. For image, we're gonna move this to the top. And let's go ahead and display that image to be maybe 100 pixels wide. Okay, so it looks something like like that, just a smaller image. But again, when you go to the details page, not only are you gonna be able to see a bigger image, if you want, you can make all of your fields editable. So you don't necessarily have to make them modifiable here in the results page. You can make them all modifiable in the details page. And one additional thing that we're gonna to add to our results page is a link. So using an HTML block, we're gonna move that all the way down. And inside this link, I always like to disable my uh, HTML editor. So we're going to go to the advanced tab and disable that. And we're going to create a very simple hyperlink. Okay, so hopefully this won't be too challenging for people who are not technical. Writing a hyperlink is very simple. It's just one line of code. You go open caret, href equals and then in between the quotes you're going to put your destination url and then you just simply call this property details and you close the a tag that's how you write a hyperlink okay using some basic html now the destination page where you want the user to go when they click on that link so here's my live example when i click on that link I want them to go to this page called propertydetails.html, which I already created in advance inside my Weebly account. So if you go to my pages here, you will see I have a page called property details. Okay. So that's the name of my page, property details. What we're going to do here is we're going to grab the URL of my website, just copy that, go back to Caspio, and in between the quotes, 
you paste that URL. But one more thing that we need to do, this link is called property details. So we just have to rename that final text, property details.html. So now when the user clicks on that link, it's going to take me to this page of my website. Now, in addition to that, one thing that's also very important here, take a look at my live example. I'm passing the property ID inside the URL. The reason why I passed the property ID inside the URL, let's go back to the results page. Once you click on that link, I need to be able to see the details of this property. So you click on the link. Once we pass the property ID, the details page is going to receive that property ID and display the information that belongs to that property ID. In addition to that, the results page that you see here that's displaying the messages sent by the end user, we need to be able to link the messages to that actual property so that we can see all the messages received for this specific property. So in Caspio, what we need to do is simply pass the ID. So you add a question mark to initiate the string or protocol. Then you, you can name this parameter name whatever you want. It's completely up to you. I usually like to abbreviate my parameter names. So instead of property ID, which is a little bit too long, I always like to go with just PID, which stands for property ID. Then you add an equal sign, and the final step is to insert the value that you wish to pass. Click OK, and that's all you have to do. OK, so now when you click on that link, it's going to take you to this page, but in the process, you're going to pass the property ID to the details page. Let's hit next. Let's display 25 listings. I think that's OK. And let's disable the details page because we're going to be building a custom details page. Hit finish. And there's my second data page. So let's deploy it. Grab our embed code, copy it back to our website. So let's go to. Um, Sorry, not property details. Let's go to manage properties. Let's go to build and let's go ahead and paste our newly copied code. Publish. All right, let's check it out. As soon as this is done publishing, we're going to go back to our live example. We're going to hit manage properties. And here's the property that we just added. Okay. If I do an inline edit, you will see that at the only field that I can edit is the checkbox. I can cancel. I can go to property details. It takes me to property details where I pass the property ID, but now we need to develop our details page to display the information regarding that property. Okay, so let's do that next. Let's go back to Caspio. Let me just check my time. Okay, we're doing good on time. Let's create the data page called details. So this is a custom details page that we can create. Hit next. Based on the properties table, let's call this property details. I'm going to again use the gray style and my localization will be English. Restrict access to our agents. Hit next. And now we need to filter the data based on a predefined criteria. Okay, because we need to filter the property details based on the ID that we passed from the results page. Okay, we're going to restrict access based on our agents. We're going to hit next. And the field that we need to use to filter the property details is the property ID that we passed from the results page. So we include that as the filtering field. And a little bit of a setup here is needed in the advanced tab. You will need to receive the value now externally. And the parameter name, does anybody know what our parameter name is? What we passed from the results page, it was PID, okay, which stands for property ID and value must be required. Okay, so now the reason why the value has to be required, you have to pass this value inside the URL in order to properly display the details of that property, right? So this has to be passed in the URL, this value. So that's why in the Caspio, we have to say value is required for security reasons. So let's hit next. All right, so what information do we want to display in the details page of the property? So we can list property title, address. We can list most of these fields, actually. Okay, we're going to hit next. And now we're going to make our fields, turn them all into text fields so the agent can modify each one of those fields. You can also turn fields into drop downs if you'd like, radio buttons. It's up to you. But just for the interest of time, I'm going to make them all text fields. 
Now, I do want to mention one more thing here. We could have made these fields modifiable in the results page too using inline edit, but I chose not to do that. But it's up to you. Whatever preference you have, you could make those fields also editable in the results page if you'd like. I'm making them modifiable in the details page. Okay, just going to take me a moment here. Almost done. Description, text area, year built. And then for the image fields, you want to make them files. Okay. Uh, actually, sorry, you want to turn it into a file up here for the form element. Let's display them as an image and let's have a bigger image in the details page. Why don't we have maybe like 200 pixels? Okay. Image two, file, image, 200 pixels. Now, one thing that I always like to, to do here is well, actually, not for the managed properties. For the public directory, we're, we're going to make that change. For now, we're going to keep everything the way it is. Image 3 is also going to be file, display the image, 200 pixels. And then listing status, you want to turn this into a checkbox. Check to publish. And date listed. Um, well, does the agent have the ability to modify the date when that property was listed? You should probably have an, usually you will probably have an admin do that, but why don't we make it modifiable for the agent as well? And that's it. That's all we have to do. Let's click finish. Okay, let's grab our deploy code. Same as before, we just copy and paste. We go back to Weebly. And in the property details page, this one here, we go to build. And we have our side by side. HTML embed codes. I'm just going to click inside this one for the details page, paste, publish, and watch how easy this is. Let's go back to our live example. So manage properties. And now when you click on the link for property details for this beautiful new home, you're going to pass the property ID inside the URL. So watch what happens. We pass the property ID. And here's my details that displays the information for this property. Okay, now as the agent, I can modify this information. I can unpublish the report from the directory if I want to and hit update if, let's say, there's a mistake that I need to fix. Okay. Very simple. Let's build the next data page that displays all of the public properties on this page. Okay, so let's build that one next. New data page reports and now whatever layout you decide to go with it's completely up to you uh, the most common one that i've seen uh, with real estate websites is using a gallery layout or list i'm just going to use gallery we're going to hit next based on the properties table and let's call this public listings i'm going to use the gray style i'm going to use the same localization and now you don't need to actually enable the login screen because the listings is supposed to be Public info. Anybody who goes to my website should be able to browse and look at all the properties publicly, right? So if we don't apply any kind of authentication, we continue. Let's build a search interface. But in addition to that, I want my results to be underneath the search form and I want to display the results on the initial load. Meaning when the browser loads, you're seeing the search interface and you're seeing the results directly underneath. All right, so let's search based on address, city, and state. I think that's what I have in my live example. I'm just going to copy it. I think I have city, address, and zip. So what did I put? Uh, address, city, not state. Let's have zip. And we also want the agent, which is going to be hidden inside the advanced search. Agent name. Okay. Somebody wanted to see an example of how we show and hide fields using like an advanced search. So I decided to include that in my example today. So we have four search fields. We're going to hit next. And then let's put these fields side by side. So here's my address field. What we can do here is we can use kind of like Google search called autocomplete. With autocomplete, you're looking inside a properties table. Here's my field called address and I want to use contains so it looks throughout the entire address. So as you begin typing inside that field, it's going to show you the listings underneath of what's available in the database. It's very common in 
um, real estate websites because even when you begin typing let's say a city it's going to quickly show you what cities are available if you type in let's say SAC for Sacramento it's going to list Sacramento directly underneath so let's just use contains for city we're going to do the same thing autocomplete okay that's my field let's do contains for zip code once again we can use autocomplete contains and then for agent ID, we're going to hide that field. But the way we're going to hide that field is by introducing a virtual field. Now, virtual field doesn't actually submit anything back to the table. It's just meant to display information on the form or on the search form. So what we can do with that field is simply say, well, before I put the label, let's turn that into a checkbox. Okay. And for display text, we can say advanced search. Okay, just like that. I don't need my label. If I have this after my checkbox field, I can disable my label. So let's disable it. Just say no label. Okay, so this won't be displayed. It's just going to read the text after the checkbox. Okay, and agent ID is going to be a text field, but we can just say agent name. And for this one here, we can also use autocomplete. Uh, let's do agents. We, uh, I use first and last name as two separate fields. I forgot to uh, combine my first and last name into a full name, which would make it easier to search the agents because you want to search across the first and last name by concatenating these two fields. So let's just have first name. But just know that you can combine these two fields in your table to have one full name. Okay, And we'll just use contains. All right, so now how do we hide that field uh, agent name? We go to rules, we create a rule. The criteria is going to be if the virtual field is not checked on the front end, so if this checkbox is not checked, I want to hide the agent ID field. Simple conditional rule that you can enable in all of your forms and reports. So now on the front end, you're going to see these three fields. Let's put them side by side. So why don't we go to the advanced tab and say continue next element on the same line, put the label on top. City, continue next element on the same line, label on top. And for the zip code field, we'll just say put the label on top. And we're done with the search interface. Let's hit next. Now, what information do we want to display on the results page? Well, let's have the image, the main image. Let's have the property title, address city state zip. Let me see what I'm displaying in my live example. Okay, price. I guess the price is price is the very first item in my live example. Then we have bedroom, square feet, address, and zip. Okay, so we can rearrange that in a second. So we have price, bedroom, bathroom, and square feet. Hit next. The end user should not have the ability to edit data via the front end. Okay, it's really just supposed to be read only. We don't want them to edit our information. We hit next. And now let's rearrange some of these fields. We're going to hold control on the keyboard and move these up and maybe have the property title at the very top. Now for image, you don't need to see the label. I mean, that's obvious that it's going to be an image. Let's display it as an image and let's display it maybe as 250 pixels. I think that's good. And the rest of the information, we don't need to worry too much about, but we do need to add another HTML block inside the results page because now you need to pass the property ID and the agent ID to the submission form. So look at, take a look at my live example. We have the property details link here. When I click on that link, I am passing the property ID and I'm also passing the agent ID. So the property ID needs to be passed in order for me to view the details of the property. And the agent ID needs to be passed to the form. So when you submit the form as the end user, we know who that form is going to or who that message is going to, to that specific agent. So when the agent logs in, they're able to see all of those messages for that property. Okay, so let's build that out. Again, I like to disable the toolbar and just simply put a href equals. Uh, let's call this maybe view details. Close the a tag and let's let's grab the link to my website. Copy it. Come back here. Paste that and the name of my page, which is very important. We need to add what we call the page and let's see what we called it under pages we call that 
Public Details. <laughs> Maybe not the best name, but I ended up calling it Public Details. So let's go back to Caspio and let's just type that in public details.html question mark. And again, if you remember what we did earlier, we need to pass two IDs now. So we're going to say PID for property ID equals, and we're going to insert the property ID like that. Now to pass multiple values, you add an ampersand, and then you just simply say AID, which stands for agent ID, equal sign. And then you simply put in agent ID, click OK. Let's hit next. Let's display four columns by 24. Okay, so then you're going to be able to see four properties side by side in a grid layout. Hit next. And no need for a details page because we're creating a custom details page. Finish. All right, so here is public listings. There is one thing that I actually forgot to include in the public listing. Let me hit edit. Hit next, next, next. What I also need to include in the search interface is I need to include listing status. I forgot to include that. And for listing status, you want to hide that field. And by default, you want to make it checked so that only public properties are listed in the directory, the ones that are actually checked off and public by the agent, made public by the agent. Okay. So you have to include that in the search form. Just hide the field, set it to yes, and now we're done. Let's grab the deploy code. Very simple. Same as before, we copy that, we go back to Weebly, and in Find Properties, let's go to Build, let's click inside our HTML block, paste, publish, and let's have a look. I can already see it. And there's the property listed by Karen Lee. We have the capability to search. Remember, we put all the fields side by side, we put the labels on top, we have that advanced search now that searches based on the agent name if we needed to. Now, if I go back in as Karen and if I say, well, you know what, I'm not ready to post this listing, we can do an inline edit, uncheck, hit update, and guess what's going to happen here on the front end? You no longer see that property. Okay, let's revert back, manage properties. We want that to be listed, update. I could have also gone into details as Karen and done the same thing from here. Okay, it would accomplish the same exact thing. And now on the public side, we're able to see that property. Now, when we click on the link down here, view details, we're gonna pass the property ID, and we're also gonna pass the agent ID. And we need to build one additional details page and one submission form here on the public side. So let's build a details page first. So create a data page, custom details, Hit next based on the properties table. And we're going to call this view property details. Again, we'll use the gray style. We'll use the same localization. No need to restrict access. We hit next. We need to filter our data because we need to receive the property ID now. We hit next. We need to receive based on the property ID because on the live example, we're passing the property ID. In order to view the property information, I need to receive that property ID. So we hit next, advanced tab, receive the value externally, PID, which stands for property ID, and value must be required. Okay, we hit next. And what information do we want to display on the properties page? We could have property title, all the information that we want the end user to be able to see. The, except for, you definitely don't want listing status, that's only for the agent. We're going to hit next. The only change that I would make here, aside from putting fields side by side and organizing my layout, really the only change that I want to make here is for images. We want to display this as an image. We want the width to be maybe 250 pixels. Okay, so one image we can make required, so they have to include at least one image when they post a property. But for the other two images, again, we can say display it as an image, 250. But if there's no second image, I don't want to display an empty space. I can go into the advanced tab and say hide field if blank. So if there's no image attached to that field on the front end, we can completely hide that field. Same thing for image three. So we'll say display it as an image, 250 pixels. And in the advanced tab, we'll say hide field if blank. 
and date list, and maybe you can move this to the very top if you'd like. And I think the rest of the fields are going to be set up as display only. In other words, read only, which is perfect. We're going to hit finish. And let's deploy our fifth data page. And we only have two more data pages left to build, and we'll be done. Grab our embed code, back to Weebly, and then inside the page called public details, uh, we're going we're gonna to position the uh, property details on the left, and the submission form is going to be here on the right. So we click inside here. What happened to my... I thought I had my embed widget here. So let me put that here. There we go. Edit and paste. Publish. Go back to our live example. Let's go back to find properties. Start from the beginning. Click on the details here. And now we're able to see. It. I did have it up here somewhere, but for some reason I wasn't able to locate it. Where is it? Oh, it's up here. Okay, so I made a mistake. Let me remove this one. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And let's remove the spacer here too. Just to move that back up. All right, so now let's publish to remove that text that says HTML. Refresh. Um, so what I'll end up doing is I do want to put this side by side. I'll see what it looks like in just a moment. Let me remove this here as well. And I think we should be okay now. Let me publish one more time. Let's come back here. There we go. All right, so now you can see the details of that property as an end user. So if you're looking at properties, let's say you're looking for your city, zip code, maybe you know the agent's name that's selling the property. You can find that property, go into details, and now if you want to contact the agent, we have to build a form to send that agent the message. Right, so we go back to data pages, build new one. Submission form, we hit next. And now it needs to be based on the inquiries or messages table. Okay, so when you submit the form, obviously that information needs to be stored in the messages table. We're going to call this um, contact agent form, style gray, localization. No need to restrict access. It's a public facing form. Hit next. And we need all of our fields on the form. Okay, we're going to hit next. Okay, so now we're passing the agent ID and we're passing the property ID from the results page. The form needs to capture both of those two values. Initially, when you're doing your building, when you're testing things, I recommend that you leave it as a text field so that you can see that value receiving. So in the advanced tab, we want to receive the value externally. And the uh, parameter name, once again, it's going to be PID. And then for the agent field, again, we receive that value and we call the parameter AIG. AID, so let me go ahead here, for agent ID, okay? And leave them as a text fields for now, but later on you can come back here and make the fields hidden. Name is going to be a text field, maybe make that field required. Email, phone, message is going to be a text area, and that's all we have to do. Let's click finish. Contact agent, deploy, grab our embed code, and we only have one more data page left to develop. So back inside Weebly, here's my custom HTML for the form. We're going to click inside it, paste our code, publish. And let's start from the beginning. All right, so there's my property listed by Karen Lee. By the way, you could also have Karen's information listed in the results page. We could display her name if we wanted to. I chose not to do that. Also, when you click on the details, not only do you see the property details, but now I can submit the form and send this message to Karen because it's linked to her agent ID. What's going to happen now upon submission, when Karen logs in to go manage her property, in the details page, we're going to be able to see those messages that are linked to her ID for that specific property called Beautiful Home. Well, now that we know that the fields are successfully receiving those two values, we can go back to that data page, click Edit, and very quickly, just make the fields hidden. Because again, you don't want the end user to change that information to something else, because they could manually. So now when we reload the page, much more simple. So let's make one submission for Karen. Okay, so we'll say our name is um, 
Ali Sheik. Our email is ali.s at sample.com. Phone number can be something random. And message, I am interested in this property. However, I can only do 3% down and with one or two contingencies. What are my chances? Probably slim. Okay, so something like that. We send a message to Karen. Uh, we're going to submit that form now. And now when we log in as Karen, when we go to that property's details, we see the property details, but now let's set up a report that displays all the messages sent from the end user. Okay, so let's go back to data pages, build our final data page very quickly. And you can see how in less than one hour, we were able to develop a simple solution for the real estate functionality. Of course, you can make it much more robust, much more sophisticated and comprehensive if you have additional project needs or if you want to modify the look and feel, the aesthetics and how everything is laid out on the website. But it's a simple working solution, right? So now to list the messages, we go to reports. Let's go with the list layout. We're going to hit next based on the messages table. Let's give this a name. Let's call this view messages. Gray style, localization is English, restrict access to our agents, hit next. And no need to search messages. I don't project that we're going to get too many messages per listing. Maybe if you're a popular agent, depends. But let's just filter the messages. Set up record level security so agents can only see their own messages. And on the next screen, we want to be able to filter the messages based on the property ID. Very important. Okay, now that's important because in order for me, when I go to the details here of a property, I'm passing the property ID, we already did that, but I need to be able to see the message that belongs to that property. Okay, so we hit next. We need to receive the property ID externally. So that's PID and value required. Hit next and now what information do we want to display from that message? So let's have the name email, phone, message, and date sent. So now as the agent, maybe I have the ability to delete these messages. Or maybe the broker has, maybe you want to archive all the messages, but the broker uh, or that brokerage will have the ability to maybe delete the agent's messages. It's up to you. We hit next. Name, email, phone, message, date sent. All of those are good. Uh, let's display 24 records per page. That's fine. We're going to hit next. You could also sort the messages, right? Based on the most recent message. And no need for details page. And click finish. And we're almost done. So view messages, hit deploy, grab our embed code, and paste our Caspio code. One final one left to do. So under pages, we go to property details. And we're going to put them side by side. So here, Edit, paste, and publish. And now we have a fully functioning application. So if I go to Manage Properties, ask Karen Lee, and if I click on Property de uh, Details, I should be able to see that message from Ali. And there's the message. Okay, and now imagine if multiple people sent Karen an interest or inquiry about this property, you'll be able to see those messages listed underneath. Okay, so ask Karen, I can add a property, I can manage my properties, I can go to details to view messages, and on the public side, anybody can look for properties and submit a inquiry about that specific property. There are so many ways to customize the look and feel of this application. Okay, I only get one hour for the live stream. Um, usually when it comes to just wireframing the tables, building all the data pages, just the basic functionality and workflow, once you get really good at using Caspi, you can develop all of that very quickly, maybe a day, two days, depending on how many data pages you might have a need for. But if you ask me, the part that takes the longest 
is to make it look pretty. Visuals. Okay, so if you're meticulous like I am, you're going to spend a little bit more time making your application look polished and nice for the end user's consumption. Okay. All right, let's check the time. Uh, we made it. I was a little bit worried that we're going to go beyond one hour, which is fine. We could have spent additional 10 or 5 or 10 minutes on this, but we made it all within 55 minutes. So I'll open up the line now for questions. I hope that you enjoy today's live stream. Uh, next week, we're going to be learning how to enhance the communication and engagement between the patients and a primary care physician. So all the different and unique ways of how we can communicate back and forth between the patient and the primary care physician. So it's more geared on the healthcare side. Uh, everything from messaging back and forth to setting up appointments to maybe doing some kind of an automatic survey back to the patient. So if they come in for a visit, right? They go in for a visit that same day, they get an email. How do we do? Fill out the survey so that we can, you know, engage our patients and know how they feel about the services that we provide as a healthcare organization. So that's next Monday. Okay. Just a simple patient portal. And it's really just focusing on communication and engagement between the patients and a healthcare provider. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. If not, if you guys decide to go, thank you so much for attending the live stream today. I appreciate it. I hope to see you next week as well. And I hope that you guys are always enjoying the new content that I produce and bring up to the live stream. As always, this application is going to be available for download in the description of the video sometime later today. And I don't want to break my promise, even for the previous one, the one that we did on high charts. I'm still working on that. I should be able to uh, give you that as well as a download from the previous live stream. I don't know if it was the previous live stream or the one before that, but where we did custom reports with charts on how you can have multiple charts within a single chart. And um, I had some homework for myself on how to do legend and how to format the actual currency. So I finished it and I will make it available for you on that video as well sometime today. Uh, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Tobai. Good to see you. I know you two are my regular attendees, so I do appreciate that. Hopefully you're able to learn something today. And as always, if there's something that you would like me to bring into the live stream, don't be shy. Let me know if you have a specific topic or something you'd like to see, and we will bring it into the live stream. Hey, thanks, Brian. Good to see you. I never know who's in these live streams. I really don't, unless you guys comment in the live chat, because there's no way for us to track who actually attends the live stream. So. Okay, you too, Tracy. Good to see you. Dexter, hey, good to see you as well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to close the live stream. I'll keep the chat going for a little bit longer if you have any last-minute questions. Have a good week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.